I live in Pune, Maharashtra. I had to travel across the country to get to Bagdogra, West Bengal, which is considered the gateway to the northeastern part of the country. The plan was to meet my friends at Siliguri and start our journey to a small village in the Darjeeling district called Lakpanchor. Jamshedpur and we are expecting quite a few thunderstorms further on this evening at Kolkata. The good news is, however, I can see clear skies out the window in front of me, so we are not expecting much. To meet my friends, I went to New Jalpaiguri railway station, an iconic place from where uncountable adventures has begun and will continue to entice and persuade people to go on their Himalayan journeys. The road trip from Bagdogra to Latpanchar through Sewak Road was scenic. As soon as we left the city behind us, we plunged into greenery all around us. The river Tista flowing alongside the road added to the awe. With its twists and turns, the road gradually elevated us to a height where we started to feel the chill. And even before we know, we were there at our destination. This was the view from our homestay's balcony. We stayed at the Hornbill's Nest Homestay hosted by Mr. Padam Gurung and family. I was amazed by their hospitality and the homely food they served. The next morning we went to Simring Tea Estate for birding, where the workers were just joining their shifts. What caught our sight was a couple of Himalayan griffon vulture, perhaps the largest and the heaviest bird found in the Himalayas. Sadly though, the species is currently marked as near threatened in the IUCN red list. Injecting livestock with diclofenac to treat fever and lameness resulted in poisoning the vultures which fed on carcasses of animals that had recently been treated with the drug. Use of diclofenac in livestock has pushed the species to the brink of extinction. We were maintaining a good enough distance from the birds as we didn't want it to disturb them at all. Making pretty images should not be at the cost of disturbing wildlife. Which was once a common sight even near cities, vultures hovering high in the skies has become a rare sight now.
Next, we went to a place called Rongtong, where we came close to this majestic birds, the great hornbills. A single banyan tree sheltered at least 16 hornbills at once. Some were having an affair, offering the partner a gift of love, trying to gain her trust. While some were still fighting rivals for mates. A male flew at another at a great speed, striking its huge bill with the opponents in mid-air. Let's have another look. The rival male somehow manages to hold his branch even after such a huge blow. I noticed this lonely male climbing to a specific perch multiple times. After realizing that the tree trunk in front of him holds his nest, where the female is waiting to be fed, I decided to leave as it's never a good idea to disturb a nesting bird. Next morning we woke up to a beautiful warm sunrise that tinted the sky in pink. Soon the majestic Mount Kanchenjunga and an entire range of snow-capped mountains became visible. Never imagined such a breathtakingly beautiful morning ever before. The village woke up to the chimes of the bell from a hilltop temple. It was perfect time for bird songs too. Couple of golden fronted leaf bird females chirp rigorously while the male occasionally joined to sing along. While some birds were ever enthusiastic and noisy, this common hoopoe was sitting idle on the ground. Probably it was too shy to start its morning rituals in front of me. I went strolling around the village of Lakpanchar itself to find the secret it holds. 
got prized by the presence of the royal family of Lakpanchor. Rufus necked hornbills are what this little village famous for. This is one of the very few last strongholds of the species marked vulnerable in the IUCN red list. The Rufus necked hornbill is now confined to northeastern India and southeast Asia. At birth, the chicks have only one stripe on their bills. The number gradually grows with age. Later in the evening, we went on an owl watching trip where again we were lucky enough to spot this Asian barred owlet. Followed by the barred outlet, we accidentally stumbled upon this master of camouflage, the collared scoops owl. I was going after some flycatchers when I accidentally focused on this amazing creature. It was so well camouflaged and sat absolutely still like a meditating monk. As owls are my favorite, the sight of these owls made my day unforgettable. Most of the bird sightings from the Latpanchar region have been possible thanks to our dedicated guide Suraj Rai. Once a little boy who used to throw stones at birds for sport against his father's repeated request to hold back his impulses. After completing his education and putting in a few years of rigorous menial work at a hotel, his perspective changed during one of his infrequent trips to his childhood home. He was inspired by his cousin who had gradually turned his love for birding into his livelihood. So after some time, Suraj finally left his dead-end job and returned home for good. He tagged along after his cousin who lent him his books on birds and slowly he awakened to a whole new world populated with wings and chirps. Over the years, his patience and perseverance has paid off and he has become skilled in identifying birds and bird calls with significant knowledge on their habit and habitat. He gladly shared these tidbits of information with us and in all our conversation, his genuine love for the local birds and his earnest desire to protect them and their natural surroundings were evident. You can easily visualize him tracking an elusive bird in the forest of the Himalayan foothills armed with a powerful binocular and a recently acquired hand-me-down camera. He is another example who has strengthened our belief in the age-old proverb that reformed hunters make the best conservationists.
Thanks for watching. Please share and subscribe and don't forget to give a thumbs up if you like my content.